Hi, I'm Adam and welcome back to First Man Photography. Now, in today's video, we are asking in 2023, can your phone or iPhone be a genuine contender to replace your big camera whilst you're out doing photography? We're gonna be testing that out today, doing some comparisons, and that's gonna include long exposure. So I would love it if you were to come with me. Let's go. Before we get going today though, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you need a domain name, a website, or an online store, make your next move with Squarespace. So as you can see, I'm set up for my first shot. Now, on the last video, I mentioned that all my casual shooting these days is done with my phone. I recently got the iPhone 14 Pro Max because my old one died whilst doing a vlog in... Oh, no, I'm gonna have to interrupt this already because the boat's just going by. Oh no, zoom in, oh no. <laughs> you see the boat? That is a really good example of where doing video and photos at exactly the same time is sometimes virtually impossible. Um, I think I managed to capture something there. I at least got some footage of the boat going past, but yeah, what was I saying? So what I'm gonna do today is do a few comparisons and use the tripod and shoot like I'm actually doing landscape photography. Do one shot with the phone. This iPhone 14 has three lenses. It's got an ultra wide, which is about, I think it's about 17 millimeters, something like that. It's got a 24 mil lens and then a 77 equivalent millimeter lens. So we're gonna try and do a range of them. And then we're gonna do some long exposure and with some Little tests I've done already, the results are just unbelievable. That could be a very interesting test to finish this video, but um, you'll have to wait till the end for that. Right, so we're into the phone here. I'm just gonna use the built-in photo app because I wanna make it as simple as easy as possible because that's what I think most people are gonna use. I'm then gonna then go to the wide angle because this has a super wide angle. So I'm just gonna recompose that. I don't want that building in on the left over there. I like these rocks. I like the clouds in the distance and put the horizon line somewhere on the golden ratio line, I think for this one. I'm gonna click on this little uh, tree here and you can see that sort of HDR, automatic HDR function working kind of, I just wanna get it into the right place for the exposure, then click to take the photo. It's as simple as that. That's now done. It looks pretty good. I like the conditions. I'm shooting in RAW as well because this iPhone 15 Pro Max lets you shoot in RAW, which is nice. And uh, yeah, I mean, I think with a little bit of editing, which I'm gonna do in the camera as well, probably, or I might import it into Lightroom, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that's pretty nice. Let's now get the DSLR and do try and get the same sort of compositions. I can leave the tripod in place because I've got this little detachable phone holder, which is quite nice. Uh, yeah, so let's do that very quickly. Definitely got the right sort of focal length. Try and compose it up the same as the phone. The aspect ratio is a little bit different on this. It's four by three on the phone three by two on here, and it's raining a little bit more heavily now, so I shall wipe you off like that. And then hopefully I'm on the two second timer, which I am, fire that away, take the shot. I've got to say, the experience is not that different, but are we gonna walk around with a tripod and our phone? I don't know, what's the important thing? It feels like a similar experience when I'm standing here, but would I head out with all this gear? and the phone. I don't know. I suppose it'll somewhat depend on the results. Now 
one of the best things about using your phone is that you can sometimes be more productive. It's great for just pulling out your pocket and snapping what you see. They may be snapshots, they may be something better, I don't know, but it's, it's nice to do it and I do it all the time now. Some of those shots that you just saw were those exact type of images. But now I have arrived at this scene here with this beautiful boardwalk the clouds and the hills in the distance, which I just think look fantastic. But because I'm on this boardwalk with a little drop off either side, there's people walking through. I don't want to block it with my tripod, so do doing it handheld is definitely the best way. I'm going to use the DSLR first and try and get the boardwalk kind of leading us up into the distance there. Now, doing it handheld with your DSLR is a little bit trickier than with your phone especially when you're holding a video camera as well. It is quite heavy. <sighs> the incentive with the phone is right there because it's so convenient and it's so easy. The incentive is to pull it out of your pocket and snap and just capture what you see rather than having to go through the technical rigmarole that you do with this, especially if you're hand holding. Right, I'm gonna put this down. There you can uh, see the boardwalk. I just think that's a beautiful shot there. Uh, that looks great. I'm going to turn raw on as well. Let's snap that one. Again, the clouds just look fantastic. Let's get a little bit lower as well. And that's another thing about having the phone is that you can just use the much bigger screen. It's just fantastic seeing the image that big. And I struggle with my eyes and I struggle with the size of the screen on the back of the camera. And I find it much easier with my phone. I think that looks really nice as well. Just let these people go past. Oh yeah, you're right. You should be able to film us running away looking. I don't know. Yeah, that's <laughs> nice people. Very nice. And yeah, I shall put them up on the screen and see what you think. <sighs> Sweaty and wet work, but uh, I think it's going to be surprising results. The key to all of this is that it depends how you're going to view your pictures and whether you're going to print. We'll talk a bit more about that because I want to print one of these pictures today as well uh, and see what that looks like because that's really for me where it counts. I'm making prints, I'm not taking photographs. Before we do a long exposure with the iPhone 14 Pro Max of that truly stunning scene behind me right now. As you know, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. Now, in my opinion, Squarespace is just the best place for photographers to build their website. And there's a few reasons for that. The main one is that we're busy people and it's just so easy to do within 10 minutes. You can upload some of your photos and a few of your words and use one of their beautiful templates, uh, select it to suit your needs and before you know it you will have a unique and beautiful looking website. It also doesn't really require any technical knowledge, it, it will put everything in the right place, it will look good on every kind of screen including a tablet and a phone which is especially important today. If you can drag boxes around on Windows then you can make a website on Squarespace. Now the other great thing about it is that it will grow with you. You can start with a very simple gallery which will make your photos look absolutely beautiful, way better than they're ever gonna look on social media. You're in total control of your work. That feels good. I think it's important to do. You can then upgrade to an online store and sell anything that you can imagine, like books, prints, cards, anything, really. It's just anything that your heart desires. So go to squarespace.com or click the link down below to start your free trial today. And if you like what you've created, use the offer code FIRSTMAN, that is FIRSTMAN. Tell them that I sent you there and you'll get 10% off your first purchase. Right, that is looking too good now. So I'm gonna go and get set up and 
make something of it. Right, I'm now in position for another shot in front of the tree that I feel I have given a little bit of fame to over the years. I love this position, I love that tree. I've photographed it so many times in so many different conditions and today it is looking particularly beautiful with the rocks that it sits on, that calm water and then those hills in the distance with that cloud on them just look stunning. Now I'm gonna be doing long exposure and I'm gonna do long exposure with the phone which sounds a bit strange because how am I gonna attach a filter and all that kind of stuff to it? I am a big fan of long exposure photography. I have been for a lot of years, I've done it on this channel so many times, but it can be a technical faff. You need filters, you need to calculate exposure time, you need different ND filters. Light can creep in if you don't get the seal right, it's difficult, it takes ages as well. It's difficult, but I've discovered an app when I was researching for this video that just makes it absolutely insanely easy. It's almost a little bit scary, actually. And it's called Slow Shutter. Now, that is the scene I have composed up. I think that looks particularly good. And I've zoomed in a little bit to about 2x, which I suppose is about 50 millimeters. Now, it's really easy to do, so you just click on settings like that and you can choose whether you want a light trail or low light or a motion blur. Now I want motion blur and I want to have that blur strength as much as possible. I'm gonna set the shutter speed. You can see there, four seconds, eight seconds, 15, 30. I'm gonna set it to bulb because then you can just press the button and the, the shutter button and it will keep on going. Got it on a set, set on a two second timer as well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and shoot. Two second timer goes off and then it starts shooting. Now you can still see what's happening. And as the long exposure continues to go, it starts to appear on the screen as it's shooting. So you can see exactly what it's gonna look like. It works differently to a long exposure that you might do if you had a filter in where it just exposes a single frame. What this is doing is taking a series of images and then combining them together by sort of blurring the movement that occurs. It's a trick that you can do with your DSLR. It's good for getting rid of people if you want to out of your scenes, but this just does it all automatically and it'll keep on going until I press the stop button. And I can see that already the clouds are starting to blur. The water has smoothed out beautifully. What's really working in my favor for this image as well is there's barely any wind. So there is no movement in the leaves on that tree. And that's gonna be fantastic. The tones are beautiful. They look a little bit grey, so when I edit this, I'm going to shift the white balance to the blue side a little bit just to give it a bit more of the mood that I'm feeling right now. But that's been going the whole time we've been talking, so I don't know quite how long it is. There's no, I didn't say how long it is, but I can see the movement all coming in. You can see how the water's moving as well. Or no, it's smoothing out, isn't it? So all that contrast being removed, you can start to see some of the reflections of the hilltops and the clouds now in the water. And it's just, do you know what? To be honest, I'm absolutely blown away. Um, I will have lost a little bit of um, resolution because I zoomed in. I think that just looks fantastic and seeing it come to life in front of you as you're shooting it is very creative. And yeah, like I say, I'm a little bit blown away. The other thing, <laughs> so once I press, I think that looks really nice now. So once I press stop, it sort of stores the image in the app. You can then go to edit, click edit. And if you click on, you can see all the saturation, contrast, brightness, freeze there. Now, if you click freeze, you can then adjust this slider and get either no long exposure effect at all there by having it on that one or slide it the other way and then it goes back to none that way, which is I guess the last shot it took. Or you can blend them all together if you have it in the middle and there's your long exposure. And you can adjust how much effect of that effect you want. And that is just a powerful creative tool. And I'm not quite sure if it's cheating or not. <laughs> but it doesn't really feel like it.
So I'm absolutely thrilled with this image here. And as you can see, I think it's come out as a fine looking print. It does, however, suffer from my experience of phone prints before where there is a slight lack of detail uh, that kind of manifests as a bit of smudginess, as you can see here. But overall, I still think it's a very impressive looking image. This one though is much more impressive. This is the phone shot with the One X 48 megapixel camera. And to be honest, I'm really struggling to tell the difference from this 5D shot here. And when we zoom in and look closely at the details, they are very, very impressive. Maybe still a slight bit of smudginess compared to the 5D because of that smaller lens and the smaller sensor. Even a seasoned photographer would struggle to tell the difference. And even I do now looking at the prints. I'm not ready to give up my camera just yet and replace it with my phone, but I think for the first time ever, I am seeing that as a serious possibility. If you want to support this channel, please consider picking up a copy of my book. I will put a link to it down below in the description, and I'll see you on another video very, very soon. Thanks for watching.